Today, I want to talk about the idea of going back, revisiting, and potentially enjoying work that we've done years and years ago. And how should we actually approach it so we get something meaningful out of that experience and not just hate ourselves. That's coming right up. I'll admit it, in the short time I've been on this planet, I have created a lot of content. Content that I have very little intention of going back and enjoying. While one reason is that I am trying to create new content, another reason is that I'm trying to find time to watch, listen, read works from other people, people who are more talented than me and that I can actually learn something from. But here's the thing, that's not always true. Odds are you learn a lot about your own work by reading stuff you have previously created. And you can see those little habits, those little bad habits that you make. You catch little things that you didn't notice before because you were so focused on everything else about the project. I believe whenever you create something, you have to create it for yourself. You have to be the first audience member. You have to somewhat enjoy this process. And when you go back and you look at it, it should feel somewhat like a photo album. However, I wonder what other successful artists do after they finish with a project. Do they go back? Do they watch it? Are they a fan of their work? Or do they just completely disconnect with it? Forever. So today I want to share with you four different types of artists who have gone back or not to revisit their work. Let's check them out. The first type of artists I want to talk about are the producers. These are people who treat their art as just a job. They create it and then they're off to do something else. Perhaps the most famous incident of artists revealing themselves as just someone who works, someone who just does a job is perhaps Johnny Depp in an interview with David Letterman. Let's have a look. Have you seen the movie? No, I've not. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you've not seen the movie? Not just yet. And, and are you too busy to see it, probably? Uh, you know, I, I, in a way, you know, once, once my job is done on the film, it's really none of my business. <laughs> you know? <laughs> None of your business. Yeah. So, so you deliberately don't look at the finished product? Oh yeah, I stay as far away as I possibly. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, if I can, I try to stay in as profound a state of ignorance as possible. Uh -huh. Well, you come to the right place. <laughs> to me, there's a real sense of freedom to what Johnny Depp just said. He is not precious with his work. He feels like. Once he has contributed his part, he's done. It's other people's time to shine. I find this to be really similar to being a professional content creator because I write a lot of blog posts and I rarely write a blog post and then go back and sit down and ah, yes, sipping, a, sipping on my Mai Tai and, and enjoying that blog post that I wrote about finance. I don't do that. My obligation is done and I'm off. I got paid for it and I'm off to find the next job. It's kind of safe is what I'm doing. You're not really addressing areas to improve or to change or to try differently. You just show up, you do the work. As a content creator, you show up, write your article, go home. Of course, if you're Johnny Depp, you don't, you don't really care about getting better. You just do it and that's all right. As long as people are hiring you, you don't have to go back and revisit your work. I think that's the moral of the story. The second type of artists I want to talk about are the fans. The fans are the people who choose the work that they are proud of, that they want to go back to, that they want to go back to and enjoy. So on one side of the spectrum is Johnny Depp. On the other side of the spectrum is Samuel L. Jackson. And it makes sense that he is in so many movies that you would just stop whatever you're doing and watch. He has a very interesting philosophy on picking his work. In a GQ interview with Samuel L. Jackson, he said this, I like watching myself in movies. If I'm channel surfing and I pass a movie that I'm in, I'm watching it no matter what. I have a drawer of nothing but my DVDs. So if nothing else, I can just go in, pull one out and put it in. 
When asked why other actors don't like watching themselves, he says that's bullshit. Because how can you expect someone to pay thirteen fifty to watch you if you can't even watch yourself? If you aren't willing to pay for it, how can you expect someone else to? So that's kind of the standard. You kind of have to push yourself. You have to be a fan of your own work, and that takes time. Course. The next type of artist I want to talk about when talking about revisiting their own work is the critic. These are the artists who are able to look back at their previous work and understand what they don't like about it. They know they don't like it. They know what they don't like. It's not just a vanity thing of, I, I just can't stand looking at myself. There's actually something critically wrong. And the example I have for this type of artist is Lady Gaga. In a 2011 interview, she talked about her song Telephone, her music video, Telephone. And she says, I hate Telephone. Is that terrible to say? It's a song I have the most difficult time listening to. I can't even watch the Telephone video. I hate it so much. Beyonce and I are great together, but there are so many ideas in that video. And all I see in that video is my brain throbbing with ideas. And I wish I had edited myself a little bit more. I love that explanation of why she didn't like the end result, why she can't go back and enjoy the work that she created. It, she's able to clearly vocalize what went wrong during the process that caused the video to become what it is. And by being able to do that, she is now able to improve all the work that she has to come. Yes, it might be cringy to go back and re-listen, watch some of your old work, but unless you're able to do that, you don't really confront the problems that you've created. Like even just this video, I'm sure a lot of things are going wrong, but in this moment, as I'm working on it, I can't really deal with all that stuff right now. There's probably like this wire that's hanging out here that is that is gonna bother me later when I watch it. But right now, I don't really have a solution. Maybe afterwards, if it continues to bother me, how high I want to prioritize this issue, I could fix it for next video. There's always a next video. And I really like that about being a critic to your own work. And if your projects are more than just a paycheck to you, then I really recommend that you treat yourself as both an artist and a critic. And you're often your hardest critic, so be easy on yourself. Pick like one or two things. You notice that Lady Gaga didn't mention like a thousand things that went wrong. She really just pinpointed one thing and just wanted people to focus on that. The last type of artist I want to talk about when I talk about revisiting their old work is the type of artist I want to be. I want to be a historian. I want to use my work as little snapshots of my life. When you're creating something, you're always creating it in the present moment. This moment right now. Me as I am right now. You put your emotion that you have right now, you put the energy that you have right now, you put the words that you know. You don't really put words and phrases that you haven't thought about yet, right? Everything that's on the page is what you're able to do. It's like when you take a picture of someone, you're not taking a picture of them in the future or from the past, you're taking a picture of them in that moment. When I write something that day, it really does capture that moment in that day and that is why I love to revisit some of my old work sometimes because I really see the person I was and the best example I have about that is from the author George Saunders who wrote Civil War Land in Bad Decline and he says it was interesting to come back to something I've made and find how much it has changed though we think we are making permanent monuments against which our eagles can rest we're actually making something more akin to a fog cloud. We come back to what we've made and find out it's been changing all along. We've changed. The artistic contents around the story has changed. The world has changed. And this is kind of wonderful and useful. It made me remember that the real value of the artistic act is not product, but process. And I think that is the best reason why we should go back and revisit our own work. It, it might seem scary. It might seem as scary as looking at an old picture of yourself. It might seem scary to face those demons you were facing in your, when you're a teenager and you're writing all these angsty poetries. A picture could show you what you look like, but a piece of writing can show 
what was underneath that person in the picture. And I find that incredibly exciting. I hope this video inspires you to go back and revisit some of the old work you have created and maybe find a little enjoyment in them. If not, at least you'll learn something for your next project. Great. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.